Hi, I'm Bob the Chemist, and this is the uh, obligatory cat to make this video go viral. And uh, we're currently five months into this pandemic. I've been uh, looking for something to do, and while social distancing, uh, I thought that it would be fun to finally tackle learning how to make a video game. So here's a quick look or a quick overview of my first 100 hours with the Unreal Engine 4. Unreal Engine is big, and figuring out how to get started was no easy task. It wasn't easy finding an introductory tutorial that focused on building something rather than showing off how flexible and customizable the engine, the Unreal Engine 4 interface is. I finally came across Paul Kinn's wonderfully clear presentation, Your First Hour with Unreal Engine. This got me uh, headed in the right direction with some basic concepts and level design while also showing a tiny bit of blueprints. The next big find was Marcos Romero's blog, which has a uh, brilliantly sim uh, simple tutorial on building a simple game uh, in blueprints. His website provided me with nearly everything I needed to get the project up and running. The last thing I needed was uh, assets. I'm no artist, so I was very glad to see that Epic Games provides a selection of free assets to include in projects. One of the assets, uh, asset packs that was available for free when I started my UE4 journey was uh, a science lab, which was right up my alley. The only player characters I could find, though, were farm animals, but I think that's okay because it gave me the idea for my game story. One of the first things I wanted to learn was how to animate my third-person character. The assets that came uh, with the tool pack had a couple of animations, and I needed to learn how to put them together. I found this uh, tutorial online that described how to create blend spaces and blueprints for this very effect. To make a long story short, it uh, involves taking a couple of animations, combining them together, to uh, uh, to make the desired effect. So in case in this case, uh, I'm making the running effect, and then I also needed a jumping effect, which I started from the uh, the chicken laying an egg to uh, uh, to jumping up and flying, which I think worked out quite nicely. The blueprints combined all of these things together, and then switching the character uh, for the science lab templated uh, demonstration map. I was able to get a, a, a nice little display of the chicken doing what's, uh, uh, what I wanted it to do. One thing that really tripped me up was using experimental plugins, uh, which is indicated by this little beta sign that you see over in the right hand corner. And if you see that, really don't use it because it's not going to work in the production uh, uh, stage of your game. I was able to come up with some neat designs and figure out all the uh, different graphics that I wanted with my uh, uh, elements, but it turned out once I tried to compile this in a production stage uh, game, it just didn't work. So don't use it. To solve this problem, I uh, went to a trusty Google search uh, looking for some tutorials on Blender since I heard that Blender could be used for making static meshes, uh, hoping to find something that wasn't too, too difficult because uh, I didn't want yet another learning curve to, uh, uh, to deal with. Uh, it turned out not only did I find some good tutorials, but uh, I could script with Python to make the process very easy and generate a whole slew of meshes for uh, all the elements that I needed. Uh, still got a nice, uh, nice design with a little bit of uh, smoke and spinning. What got me really excited about Unreal Engine was blueprints. Being able to focus on the game events and workflow and less on object-oriented syntax gave me the platform I needed to explore the concepts of game design and accelerate the design process. Still, there was a reasonably steep learning curve as I worked through the strategies to organize blueprints neatly, name them coherently, and find just the right function for a given task. 
For example, I spent quite a bit of time working on a function to randomly select items from an array until I found out that I could simply shuffle the array and then take the first few elements to populate my randomized subset. Setting up the key components of the game, such as collecting elements, was straightforward. At this point, I was able to design a sequence to branch through options such as doing nothing if the game is over, picking up the elements, and assigning damage when, player, when a player makes a mistake. I wouldn't be so bold as to say it was easy to put the blueprints together, but the platform made the whole project feasible, and I'm surprised at, uh, as, at what could be accomplished with a few nodes and connections. At this point, the only thing left to the uh, game design was an interface, and the tutorials for making the interface were very well written. No need to belabor this point, save for highlighting the neat tip of making the main menu an actual level, in order to get a little animation going when the player first starts the game. So let's take a look at some actual gameplay. I added uh, two assist features to help people through uh, navigating the game. One of them is the current element can uh, is set on fire, and a little more subtle one is up there on the uh, whiteboard. You'll notice that the whiteboard has the current element that is uh, needs to be collected. I don't have anything set up yet to uh, turn these two uh, cheats on and off. That's uh, going to be one of the next steps. Once we get into level two, you see that there are four elements that have been uh, uh, placed in the lab. Energy's gone down a little bit because we've hit a couple of elements probably when they uh, when they respawn. Sometimes if they respawn right where you where the chicken is, the chicken gets hit. So that's not necessarily fair, but I haven't done anything about that right yet now. I'd also like to deal with the uh, the spinning smoke a little bit. Can't figure out how to get one part of an actor to uh, spin while the uh, the smoke just does its thing. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we finish it up. There you have it. So there you have it. I'm not quite sure if Chicken Lab is worth 100 hours it took to make, but it was a fun project and I learned a lot about the game design in the process. Who knows, um, you know, what I'll do next with the project. Uh, perhaps I can get a few students of mine uh, who have interest in science education and gaming and design something fun that people would actually play. Only time will tell. Thanks for watching.